okay. And you know, for me, I see what I mean is so different is you don't see parts like this anymore. And you're talking very small batch work, aren't you? Yeah, volumes. Are, yeah, volumes are very low. Can be from single components. Um, if we do what you might deem for us a production run, it would be 10 components possibly. So oh, really? Some of the, some of the part, piece parts are really small volume, car sets basically. So you've got a lathe here, but you've also gone for a brand new mill from Herco, the VM20 machine. So what was the reason behind this purchase? Um, we had a previous uh, machine and it just wasn't doing it for us. It was letting us down. Um, and we needed something that worked and was reliable and thankfully is producing parts quicker. You know, you're not just supplying a collet truck, you're supplying the complete solution. So do you actually go out and measure the spindle noses for customers and do all of the technical um, information gathering so you can make the right parts so they fit um, as well as supply the truck. We do, particularly on older machines because, you know, the reference data is, you know, hard to get hold of. Newer machines, they're easier, but even they can vary from, you know, what the manufacturer says it is. Lindsay, you've been today's presenter. How's the day been? Oh, it's been fantastic. The students, what was really good was the students were engaged and that was really important. We got them to answer questions, we did polls and we got feedback, but we also got students asking questions at the end and I think that's, that's really a sign of them enjoying themselves. It is quite often when you do these presentations, it's a PowerPoint slide and you can just see people glazing over, can't you? But today was, it was a dynamic event. Yeah, the event, we were interactive with the students, they were interactive back and that's all you want because you know that they're gonna take something away from today with them. I think it was very interesting, you know, because um, you got a lot more in-depth view of um, this side of engineering. You are, it, it's capable of machining the harder and more difficult materials. I mean, this operation here, we've got a U-drilling operation happening on this machine. We've got a big, chunky 12-station turret, but it is just a turning machine. You just said big and chunky. It is a big, chunky machine. Why is it? And you've got such a big space at the back of the machine too, haven't well, you? Well, of course, with this longer bed length, if you've got over a metre and you're looking to do some maybe deep hole boring, then when you've got that boring bar on the turret, what happens if you uh, want to, to get close to the component and that boring bar would potentially collide with the with the side of the machine so by having that big recess at the back means you can bury the boring bar down there uh, without you know without having any collisions or having any issues in the machining area um, so what are we going to see in today's show let's let's walk the audience through David what, what they can expect to see yeah yeah well um, great to, to be here it's a wonderful opportunity for us so um, we're basically going to use this Quasar machine to show you uh, what is available in today's uh, technology for probing on a machine tool. So a lot of people will probably already know uh, probing on machine tools. Um, we have standard probing solutions on here, but we want to show you the next generation really, the what we term the Digilog range of products, uh, which shows you just how far you can go to control the the entire process to ensure that every part coming off the machine is a is a good part and you you're not re, you're not scrapping you're not reworking part so i'm in worthing today and i'm going in here and boy you do not want to miss this video i'm going to talk about stock control with jeff from psl day track and it's not just your bar is it there's a number of different components david today we're at interco special steels and alloys and we're working together on a fantastic project but what i really want to investigate further um, and to educate our audience on really is is all of the technical elements that go behind actually just getting the truck onto the machine in the first place No, brilliant. And um, this, this podcast is really relevant to our current climate um, and we'll get onto that shortly. But Steve, 
Today we are discussing this subject. Can you start by giving our audience an overview of what life cycle products mean at DMG Murray? Yes, what we've done is we, we formalised it into a position which we can offer various services and products um, to really enhance the capabilities of the machine, give the customer better efficiency um, and, and utilise the machine a lot better. And, you know, there are many products in there. John will go through those individual products um, that, that all have a meaning to somebody and some, sometimes every single product um, can be put together to actually give the benefit to the customer. Um, what, we, what we're looking at here is we're looking after customers long term. It's not about selling a piece of car line, getting in and getting out. It's about building that relationship, working with the customer, making sure that he gets the best efficiency from the machine. And we of course have the then enjoy repeat business. So effectively, Steve, you're adding value through these products um, and you're kind of really like getting the best out of the machine tool, getting the, the, the best longevity from the machine tool through these products. Adding value is, is certainly a, a key term, isn't it? So, yes, that's what we're doing. And the customer's always looking to improve. And these are various ways to improve. Thanks, Steve. Now, in, in a digitalised world, not just at DMG Mori, but around the world and, and certainly after covid digitalization has increased uh, yep. massively you know it's gone to a completely um, different level john can you firstly break down the different products that we're going to be talking about in this uh, podcast okay so we have uh, a number of products we have my dmg mori which is the online portal we have net service which is a remote access to increase uptime we have messenger that is a product that monitors the machine and allows the customer to see exactly what's going on with the machine 24-7. We also have another product called Workblick. That product is all about managing the facility, managing the machine tool, and managing everything around it, including the environment to make sure it's more efficient and so that product is more efficiently made because everything's ready on time. Are you ready for our MTD magazine, the May issue? Because you'll be getting your copy in the post any day now. As always, another bumper issue with 84 pages packed with unique and insightful content. So what's May's issue all about? Well, our medical sector report discusses the rapidly evolving sector, especially in light of the COVID pandemic. As an industry that is double the size of the UK civil aerospace sector, any changes here can have a big impact on UK manufacturing. We also have an interview with Professor Keith Ridgway, OBE and CBE, and founder of the AMRC Sheffield and executive chair of the AFRC in Strathclyde. He discusses the UK industrial strategy and why the UK is falling down on levelling up. The technology focus in this issue is all about measurement and we kick this section off with Dr Christian Young highlighting the impact metrology can have on sustainability. And we also have an MTD exclusive competition where you can win a set of mountain bike pedals courtesy of Mitotoyo and Pembry. I know Mark Dedman might like that one too. In the software section, we'll be looking back at the recent MTD Live event at CG Tech, where I discussed Vericut Force and its applications at the Seco Technical Center. Continuing with the medical theme, we have another exclusive from Younes Chahid. Now, he's been named as one of IMEKI's 35 rising stars to watch under 35. And he talks us through how additive is revolutionizing hip joint designs and manufacture. Really interesting. In the machining section, we interview JWA Tooling, a company that has invested heavily in new machine tools, even through the pandemic. And we discuss why they bought Mazak Machining Centers and how it was an MTD video that prompted them to buy their first Mazak 5-axis machine. We also take a look at Forjaw and how this company has launched a £179 plug and play system to plug into your machine tool and give you access to never been seen before data and insights. 
And of course, we'll have all the latest from the world of cutting tools, our what's new section, and so much more. And don't forget my favorite section, the spot the difference as well. You won't forget. Uh, right, please don't forget to click on the QR codes inside with your mobile phone camera and watch the associated MTD video. And don't forget that you can listen to features in our magazine. Just search for MTD Audiobook in your favorite podcast platform. A massive thank you, as always, to our advertisers for all of your support. Enjoy the issue.